Today let's talk about uh, operating this unit. I'll do some comparison back and forth between these two units. First of all, this one has to be calibrated. This one doesn't really have any way to calibrate it. This one just uses a one button on off. This has a button to turn it on and off by pressing down on this digital selector, but it's also got the digital selector. These two different types seem to be based pretty much on the same chip, so this one's on one chip and this one's on another. Uh, okay, so let's begin. The first thing we need to do with this one is to calibrate it, and to do that we're going to need two parts. We're going to need this jumper, which I'm holding right here. It's an M-shaped jumper, so we need to connect pins 1, 2, and 3. And then they gave us a capacitor as part of the calibration, and we're going to need that. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to connect pins 1, 2, and 3 together. You've got to be careful because uh, on this one, it, this layout is not the same as this layout. This layout over here, let me push this aside, this is, these are all pin 1's over here and, and then you can see, I'm sorry, it's 1, 2, 3 and then all 1's on this side and this one is 1, 1, 1 and then 2 and then 3, 3, 3 like that. So uh, if you switch back and forth between these styles, don't get confused, this is why I label this here. So I've got a 1 in 1, 1 in 2 and 1 in uh, position 3. And we'll close this and we'll start it up. And now we're in self-test mode. And, ah, I, yeah, okay. So if you turn the knob as it starts to test, it will go to the menu. From the menu, we want to get to self-test. Push the button. We have these shorted and we're not supposed to touch them while it's, uh, well, it's calibrating. You're not supposed to touch any of the components. It will tell us uh, it will, after a while to remove these. I will show you that. And then we'll wait again and it will tell us to insert a capacitor which they gave us in the kit. Okay, isolate probe. I'm not paying attention. Isolate probe, we move this out, then we will wait uh, for the capacitor symbol. When it gives us the capacitor symbol, we'll, we'll go between pins 1 and 3. The first couple times I tried this, it didn't work because I put them in the wrong slots, in the wrong, um, in the wrong ports. And it's getting there. And the capacitor symbol should be coming soon. Here it is. Okay, so again, between 1 and 3. And close it down. And test end. Yes, it doesn't really tell us anything exciting. It just says test end. Okay, and then it takes us back to the, uh, back to the menu. Okay, so now we are calibrated. I've already got a video on this tester, but we'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons. Uh, just to operate this thing, you simply put in the component, like the other one, you press the button. It comes up, testing, and it tells us it's 220.8 nanofarads. ESR is 0.19 ohms, and it gives us a uh, capacitor symbol right there. Okay, so let's compare that to this one. and. I have to look to make sure I'm getting it in the right slots or I won't do it that. I'll get it wrong again. Uh, there we go. Lock it down. And 225 ESR. Uh, yeah, roughly within tolerances. Okay. So just a comparison, that's our uh, capacitor operation. And let's do a resistor test. Okay, that looks reasonable. Oh, well, we got 330, yes. Okay, we'll pop it in over here. And again, making sure that our connections don't fool us.
one and three, three twenty-four. Okay, so the you know they're within specs. The readings are theoretically, if you can contort one of these uh, variable resistors in place, it will measure the different legs of it. So I've got one leg in one, and one in two, and one in three, and I push this, and it tells me twenty-one eighty-seven and uh, eleven point. 44k. So this is supposed to be a 10k pot. Um, let's see what happens when we turn it to the extreme. Okay, there's one extreme and we'll remeasure. So yeah, it gives me a little different values, 57 and 78, so that's 13 on 14k. So it won't give you accurate measurements if the pot is turned one way, all the way one way or the other. The instruction manual for this tells me that, which is why I suspected it was true. Uh, but yeah, if you have to, if you're going to measure a pot, you have to put it somewhere uh, towards the middle. Okay, let's see how it does in the other one. It took some con contorting of the legs to get it in there, but uh, this one's actually a little bit easier to to put the. Uh, component in there because of the way the slots numbered um, and yeah 85 and 46 12 13 K so uh, actually uh, I think this one's giving a little bit better results here's an LED let's see what it tells us okay not anything special Let's pop it over into this one and see what it says, if it does any better job. And roughly the same numbers. The capacitance is quite a bit different, but okay. It's an ordinary diode. And, okay. Let's see what the other meter says. Again, making sure I get it in the right spots. Oh, this one was a lot faster. This was a component I had mislabeled or missed placed in my uh, in my transistor bucket and this is obviously a dual diode okay let's run a comparison faster okay let's, let's compare some inductors um, this is one of them where they just don't do well in fact the manual for this one just says inductors don't test well, has a very limited range, they're very honest about it. Okay, 0.9 millihenries, that's pretty correct. And let's see what this one says. I've actually measured this one with, uh, with a uh, 0.9. So okay, they're both uh, pretty reasonable for this, for this. But the the range on these meters for inductance of any kind uh, is is not great. Let's uh, try one that fools them almost every time. Here's an inductor that they don't usually do very well with. It has a core. It's a very short coil, and it usually thinks it's a resistor. Yes, it thinks it's a resistor. Um, and I know that this one will do the same because it did in the last test. It thought it was a resistor. And yeah, it thinks it's a resistor. So uh, the, uh, the limits on these for inductance isn't good, however, I uh, found online for a few bucks they actually have one of these devices that tests inductors and it seems to have a much wider range so you know 
for the price. I think I'll probably get one and test it. Okay, on to the next. These are some matched PNP NPN uh, transistors that I have from Audio, and they've been closely matched for for specs. So I wire them together, but I'm only testing one at a time. We'll see what it says. It says the PNP B is 232. Okay, and then of course it gives us our little diagram down here, which is nice. Let's test that over here. And we've done this before, so we should get very similar results. And yes, tells us the PNP. Uh, same HFE and so on. Okay, so very close. Now let's test its test its uh, opposite number. And this is NPN and uh, HFE two ten. I haven't seen B, but okay, B is a kind of a unique designation I'm not familiar with but and yes uh, HFE is 214 it's NPN so yeah reasonably close results okay so that's uh, regular bipolar transistors okay this is a MOSFET and we've tested it with the other meter before it shows our little diagram over here, which is very nice. Uh, specs, okay. Let's quickly put it in this one and compare. And diagram, MOSFET, capacitance. Um, yeah, as far as I can see through here, roughly the same. Okay, so MOSFETs. We have compared all of the standard things, resistance, capacitance, inductance, and so on. And yeah, they both seem to do a pretty good job. This one may be a little bit faster. But uh, now where we are is this thing over here has several more functions we need to explore. Let's go through some of these other functions. We'll demonstrate them. It has switch off, which is immediate switch off. Transistor mode is what we were just looking at. It's, it really should just be called tester mode because it tests transistors and resistors, capacitors, whatever. It has a uh, frequency counter, which we'll demonstrate here in a little bit, frequency generator, a 10-bit pulse width, width modulation. It has this function, uh, which is to measure capacitors uh, between pins 1 and 3, that you, where you can actually measure them in circuit. Uh, this is just test the rotary uh, encoder, self-test, contrast on the screen, show data, which uh, shows everything that's stored in memory, and then switch off. Okay. So let's go look at these other, uh, the frequency generators and the 10 width, uh, pulse width modulation and the frequency counter. I've got this now in uh, frequency counter mode and I'm feeding it from my signal generator over here. And you can see it compares pretty nicely, 2000 hertz and 2000 hertz. Let's crank it up, say 32,000 hertz. Um, it's a little bit slow to respond, but uh, this is doing a nice job. Uh, 66.998, okay, that's reasonable. Let's crank it up in bigger numbers. Um, yeah, still looking pretty good. 20, 20 megahertz, yeah, so uh, frequency counter mode, it seems to work pretty well. It's a little bit slow, but yeah, I mean, if you, uh, if you want a frequency counter and you don't have a lot of money, I mean, this is a great tester. Uh, let's see how well it does with, uh, in frequency generation mode. So right now it's in counter mode. Let's see how well it generates a frequency. It seems to uh, count them pretty well. My scope won't do a thousand megahertz, but it will do 2000 kilohertz. It's kind of a spiky wave. It's supposed to be square. A uh, thousand, okay, 500 kilohertz, uh, 153, clean it up a little bit, um, 
100 kilohertz, 50 kilohertz, whoops, 50 kilohertz, 25, 10, 5,000. Okay, so, I mean, if you, uh, if you need a frequency generator and, you know, within a limited range, this actually works pretty well. So put this in a box, you'd have a tester, frequency generator, and a frequency counter. This is the uh, pulse width modulation mode. And you can change it. You can see what it's doing over here. So in case you need that function, you also have that. Well, here we have our two testers, and we've done quite a bit of comparison on them. Um, really, they're both a very good deal. If you just need the basic testing functions, this is six bucks, seven bucks, something like that with a case and delivery. Uh, does a good job, seems to be a little bit faster than this one. If you have very limited space and limited uh, money, and you need things like uh, pulse width modulation, you need a frequency generator, a frequency counter, uh, plus all the tester functions that this one does, uh, this is a really good deal. 15 bucks and you basically can set yourself up a, 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 a bench. Uh, it'll do a lot of good stuff, a lot of good electronic stuff in a very small package. So yeah, uh, both very interesting products. Personally, I think I'm going to keep this one and give this one away to a friend. But uh, yeah, that was it. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your home electronic projects.